times again. Now they're starting to drop. Fastest lap this time by Habsburg. He's dropped Lando Norris for a bit. But only for a bit because yeah. da Daniel Tixon has taken it away in fifth place. Flying he is. 2.13.184. Habsburg is going to make an attempt on Gunter. Here we go. Watch this, folks. The Austrian jinx to the inside, which will become the outside for the next corner. But they're side by side and brilliant stuff by Habsburg because he gave the German no chance of coming back at him. And through goes Habsburg in a classic Macau overtake. Now, what can the Austrian do? The Empire strikes back, <laughs> so to speak. Super. <laughs> Absolutely super stuff by Ferdinand Habsburg. Look at that. That was just brilliant through Mandarin. He gives him this, the idea that he's going to stay on the outside and then does that and says, no, sir. And I've got no problem with that, have you? No, absolutely not. I loved it. Every single moment of it. Now, Maximilian Gunter, what was he doing? He was 1.1 seconds behind. And that's PK. PK is out of the Grand Prix. Oh, it's, or it's a helmet similar. Well, that time, no, I, do you know who I think that is? I think that's Devlin Di Francesco. The, yeah, no, I, or Alex Palau. The recovery is going to be very quick, uh, but we've got a yellow flag, and it's down at uh, post five at this boa. I thought it was PK for a minute because of the helmet colours, but, uh, well, we'll soon find out. Alex Palau is going down, but... Uh, the race continues, and I don't think that uh, incident will affect anything. But Burton and Habsburg, and look at Lando Norris. What I was going to say was that Maximilian Gunter had had a fair crack of the whip of getting onto the tail of Sergio Sata Camera, who leads the race. Now, Habsburg has got the job to do himself, and the pursuer becomes the pursued. Yeah, no question. Now, let's take a look at the lap times as they cross the line again. Camera, now... A 2.13.4 last time out, and a 2.13.8. And it was Devlin Di Francesco, the Canadian, the young Canadian making his debut, who has succumbed to the Lisboa. And down the main straight they come again. And again, Lando Norris looking for a way, any way past the man in front of him. And has he got a chance here? He certainly is going to try. Here he goes, gets the slipstream. Defensive driving by the number nine, Gunter. But Lando won't be denied it. Tickton, Tickton's in on this. And Tickton might try up the inside of Lando Norris. Can't quite do it. The Brits got the bit between his teeth. And he wants a bit of Lando Norris. The two Brits glued together up the hill. Very impressive, that. Daniel Tickton is still right there on the gearbox of Lando Norris. Well, um, let's not try and overtake here. Might be able to do it in touring cars. I'd rather you didn't in a Formula 3 car. Very, very close indeed. And I'll tell you what, folks. It does... <laughs> I just saw Gunter go absolute sideways there as he came through hospital and maternity bend. And uh, they are pushing. And Tickton now... Look, see look at that. Lando Norris also getting squirrely. It's getting pretty tough out there. 12 of the 15 have gone. We are getting closer to the end of the World Cup. And at the moment, it's going towards Brazil. It's a bit ragged for Lando as well. A couple of moments where you see the back of the car just step out when he comes out of the corner. And he's under a huge amount of pressure as well. Daniel Tickton is not easing that pressure, is he? Up towards the Melco hairpin. Just a brief moment to to pause and reflect and then it's back on it down the hill well all the talk last night certainly in dry conditions was how much downforce to use on the car and equal that between the grip you're going to get and how quickly the tires go off and therefore as the race goes on starting to run out of that grip and uh, everybody was kind of toing and froing as to what to do but as you can see as desperate times and desperate measures uh, everybody's starting to get a little ragged out there. Because there are only three laps to go in the 64th Macau Grand Prix. Sergio Sete Camera leads, Hasberg second, Gunter in third, Norris in fourth, Tictum in fifth. And Tictum about to go and try and attempt to get fourth place here. And there's nothing between them. Ralph Aaron still the top uh, rookie. And look at them. Tictum in the Red Bull car. He really does have wings. Watch this, folks. Here he comes. 
Wow, down to the inside, now to the outside. And there goes the number one, Lando Norris, looking up the inside. Tictum tries, can't do it. Lando Norris is trying also to get past the man in front of him. And wow, what a freight train we've got up San Francisco Hill. Lando Norris attacking and defending. At the wow. same time, yes, he's got four eyes and 15 legs at the moment. Right on the tail of Maximilian Gunter, the final podium position in the Grand Prix. That's what's up for grabs here. And ironically, Ralph Aaron and Pedro Piquet, because of this fight in front of them, have caught up. And now we've got a five-way battle for effectively fourth place. With two and a half laps to go, oh, this is absolutely fascinating. Sergio Sade Cameron leads. He leads by 1.7 seconds at the end of the last lap. But third place on the podium is far from over. No, absolutely. What a great race. It always is here. The 64th <laughs> running of the Macau Grand Prix is not disappointing. Gunter is at the moment in third place. But look, you can see he's got the rest of them glued to the back of him. Oh, now you really... Don't look in your mirrors, my friend. You'll scare yourself to death. <laughs> now you really do notice how the, the tyres may be going off at this stage. We've only got uh, this lap and two more to go. Up towards the Melko hairpin. This the battle for third place. Oh, and a touch. Yep, Gunter was hit from behind there from Norris. Just a little love tap to say, hey, I'm coming through. Was he watching the touring car races earlier been. on? He might have been. I don't think he had any choice, but now Lando tucking himself right up behind him as they go through Fisherman's. Look how tight Gunter takes that corner to try to give himself a chance to get away from Lando, but he can't, and this is as close as Lando's been. But look at Tickton behind, again the three of them, and Lando's going to have to have eyes everywhere here because Tickton wants a bit of him. And Lando wants past Gunter, and I think that's the reason Lando's getting desperate. Not only is the race coming to an end, but he knows that if he's not able to get past Gunter, then Tictum is going to attack him. And here it happens again. What a race! Through Mandarin they go. And once more, Gunter tries to defend, but this time Lando's got the run on him. Tictum's got the run on both of them, and through comes in the middle. Surely not. Oh, I almost thought, oh, what a big lock up there. Daniel Tictum gets the better of all of them. How did he do that? The crowd went wild, and Tictum does it. Absolutely fantastic stuff by Daniel Tictum. Wow. Wow, that was top draw racing. And something had to give, and the others had to, and Tictum's gone through. Can I breathe? Possibly not. Well, I used to read Desperate Dan when I was a kid, but, <laughs> but, that, but that was the epitome of it. Astonishing. There's been no doubt about Daniel Tictum's speed around the Macau circuit yeah. all weekend. But all his bravery just then, that was as good as it gets. I said you wait for somebody special or something special at Macau to show who's got the, me the metal, and that was one of those moves. And we haven't been looking at the top two for a while, and look how Hausberg has closed up on the back of the leader, ah, Sergio ah, Santa ah. Camera. Wow! This lap and one more to go in the 64th Macau Grand Prix and we're up for a grandstand finish. It just gets better and better. What a race this is turning out to be. And Sergio Sete Camera, who has been third in this race and uh, would love to give Brazil another victory. Following in the footsteps of the likes of Maurizio Gugelman, Ayrton Senna, uh, Roberto Maurizio and so many others, Lucas de Grassi and now Sergio Sete Camera, but an Austrian following the footsteps of Lucas Auer can possibly do it for Carlin and he wants this bad, his dad is here, but will the man with the famous name make his own famous racing name? It's one thing to step out of the shadow of being a Habsburg. It's another to win at Macau, but he's got a chance to do it. And here he comes, folks. Ferdinand Habsburg has got the run on the number 19, and Camera is a sitting duck for now. He's got to defend, and he does so through Banner. They're side by side. There's no room to do that, folks. And he's done it, though. Habsburg's done it. He's going to take the lead. And he's got to because Camera's going to run out of road. Camera holds on, but he's got a break, and through goes Habsburg. Sensational racing again. And Camera somehow holds off. Wow. Unbelievably brave. Wheel to wheel between these two. Is that going to be the last opportunity no. for Habsburg? No, 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 no. <laughs>
This is the last lap, and Camera is holding on for dear life now as Hatchberg wants this ban. He really does. He knows he's got the pace on the Brazilian, who said, I've got the, the set of tyres, but Hatchberg amazingly hasn't. You can see how used those tyres look, but Hatchberg, as you can see, is driving like a demon right now. What a race! And Camera, if he does win this, will deserve every moment of it. Now, Habsburg trying to force a mistake even, because time is running out in terms of opportunity. He's got one real chance at the bottom of Fisherman's to make a move. But he's got to tuck himself right behind here at the Melco. Meanwhile behind, Daniel Tictum is still in third place, ahead of Lando Norris. Wow, this has turned out to be a vintage Macau Grand Prix in the 64th running. There he is, Hatsburg. Dictum still just ahead of Lando Norris. Great battle in the midfield. Gunter drops right down. Ralph Aaron's going to finish fifth in his debut season. Here we go. Lando Norris trying desperately to get up there, but it's going to be Hatsburg trying to stop. Sergio Sete camera, and there's nothing between them. They're side by side coming to the last corner. Habsburg's got him! Habsburg's got him! And camera hits the wall! So too does Habsburg! And Daniel Tictum wins the Macau Grand Prix! What a finish! Oh, I've seen some close finishes in my time here, but that just takes it all. And desperate Dan does it in style at the Macau Grand Prix <laughs> and deserves it too because he made the boldest move. He was there at the right time and when all around were losing theirs, he stepped up to take what is almost an unbelievable win for the Motor Party. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. Daniel Tickton wins the 64th Macau Grand Prix. Here we go again. Habsburg has got the run on camera. And look at the speed that Habsburg has here. He's passed him at this point. Camera slots in behind. And the trouble is Habsburg has lost already. He was going to hit that wall way before camera. And I did have a feeling that ha I've never seen anybody uh, overtake that quickly there. And, uh, uh, you know, Habsburg's finished in fourth. <laughs> With three wheels. That was incredible. Yeah, still finished in four. <laughs> wow, I'm feeling a bit emotional. <laughs> I think are they are too. If you want emotion, go down there. That is absolutely incredible. And, well, that'll go in the history books, won't it? Daniel Tictum said he had the fastest car, felt he had the uh, fastest car. Oh, well, he was supreme. Day one, day two, absolutely superb he was. It was only the qualification race that didn't quite go according to... Uh, the qualifying that didn't quite go according to plan but uh, and here's something i'll tell you that i didn't tell you before the start of the race <laughs> and uh, trevor carlin is saying to, to Habsburg, hey mate and there's dad <laughs> well, the, Habs the Habsburg <laughs> empire is secure because that was <laughs> that oh, wow. was quite brilliant he, he definitely had the force there you go <laughs> That was top draw. A hug with Trevor Carlin. Well, and Trevor Carlin seen it all and has had, I would argue, some of the best drivers in the world come through his ranks and through his team. And I think Habsburg has just come of his own. I remember meeting him for the first time in New Zealand about three years ago. And like I said, when you come with a royal name, you often wonder whether it's all because of that name that you're there. But today, Habsburg has proved beyond all doubt taking on one of the world's top drivers that he has what it takes and has the risk factor as it were to go all the way that was sensational and look what happened to Tictum just avoiding the bodywork <laughs> body <laughs> and Tictum couldn't believe it <laughs> wow so, so the celebrations continue and the story I was going to tell you was and in fact the Habsburg logo is emblazoned on his back. That's uh, part of the royal standard of Habsburg. Well, that was a royal drive for sure. But let me tell you something about Daniel Tictum. On the side of that car is a tribute to one Barry Bland. And he asked me that if things went his way, 
would I mention that? And here I am, because Barry Bland was one of the men who helped make Formula 3 here over the years, if not was the leader in making it as good as it is today. And I think it's somewhat apt that Tictum is carrying both his name and a tribute to Barry Bland, that he's won this Grand Prix. So I feel for Dan, and wow, what a way to win it. But um, what a way to celebrate it. That has been one of the most emotional roller coasters for the Macau Grand Prix. I had another bit of news as well, Johnny, uh, which I kept for lap upon lap upon lap. Mick Schumacher got back out onto the circuit, put in the fastest lap of the race as well, a 2.12.651. You're kidding me. No. 2.12.651 for Mick Schumacher. Finished up in 16th place. Last of the finishes. I love it. What a great story. I would have put my hand up like I was in class, but there was too much, <laughs> too going, much on. going on. Well, Red Bull, some people ask why the, who they, who, how they pick their juniors. Well, I think that question's been answered. <laughs> Max Verstappen, look out. Here comes the next one. <laughs> Daniel Tictum. And he isn't the most experienced driver out there either, is he? Far from it. And he's, Stan... not done, he's not done that much Formula 3 in his career. And it does rather reward uh, Red Bull's faith that they've put in uh, the young British driver. Two Brits on the top two steps of the podium. Daniel Tictum and Lando Norris. The other thing he asked me to say is a thanks to his dad, Mark, for all his support over the years. And how cool was it that we had a conversation yesterday and he was already predicting something special. There's confidence for you. Well, he certainly had the wings today. And, yep, okay, it took a crash, but he was in the... Re That's motor racing, folks. Uh, you have to be in the right place at the right time, and you have to be in it to win it. But really, his overtake was more important. Let's see if we can get Alexander in there. Alexander Legree's going to just wait for him to get his helmet off, and then she'll uh, have a word with a very emotional interview with our winner. No words. <laughs> what a ridiculous race here in Macau. Daniel, from your opinion, go for it. Honestly, uh, there is no words to describe <laughs> what I'm feeling right now. My hair is pretty horrific. But My I hair care. is not important right care. now. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't believe that's just happened. I, I mean, everyone will say there is an element of luck in it, which there is, but I kept my nose clean throughout the whole race and just took my opportunities where I did, and I did an, obviously a very good move with Lando around the outside, so I did what I needed to do. And um, obviously the setup changes we made to the car obviously worked for this race, so I, absolutely ecstatic. I cannot, I cannot thank everyone enough. The team have been incredible. My father, everyone, Red Bull, Dr. Marco, everyone, thank you so much. Congratulations, well done. Says the right thing at the right time too. The man from London, just 18 years of age, thanking his father, Mark thanking Red Bull for their faith in him. 